Hello, this is Pixie. Doing a quick video. Um, what can I tell you about today? I can probably do it quite quick actually. And um, so, so first thought is about CERN, issues around CERN. They're always trying to find out the different particles and understand the physics of the universe by smashing it, to get, smashing it up because they know it recombined and so on. Um, the problem is, is the element of consciousness. Until science actually acknowledges consciousness exists as a, as a kind of element, in essence, it's, um, you know, but then they do know about it. If you look at things like um, Transformers the movie, let's say, you've got this, you've got um, The Matrix. I, don't, I call it the All Spark, I, I hate I hate the reference to the new stuff. But the, the idea of this thing had the ability to create life and it created consciousness. And, and at first I think consciousness in itself is just a, a very simple waveform. This is why you need to exi have many lives to become more advanced because you can't gain all that experience. I mean, you could you could become a clone or a copy, but there's always issues around that, in that you might miss some of the crucial lessons, or, or if you're a clone or something, you might take on things that you don't need, like um, like you might become almost like a psychopath. You've got every all the air, um, training around it, um, but you don't have any of the understanding or meaning behind it. So you need to go through a process of, um, you know, evolving and making mistakes and gaining experience. There's stuff about karma and um, and that people choose f experiences. I don't think they do. There's, there's, a, there's probably a whole wide range of things. However, saying that, why would I choose the life I've... So some of the stuff, like recent stuff I've moaned about, some of it's been in this like deja vu thing, you know, like you feel like you've done this before, or this memory's come in, or something slipped into a mind. Or maybe it was just me viewing into the future. So my mind's looked, tried to look forward into the future, and it's just picked up on something. So I guess it was, maybe it's just it's the parallels, where parallels cross. Because the day I kind of saw something, I thought, well, that didn't happen, or, you know. And, um, but it was, it was at a similar location, this thought come to me almost. Um, and it was in the same sort of timeline, so it's... Um, maybe I've deja vu it, you know. Um, where am I going with my talk? Oh yeah, CERN. So, the problem with this, um, if there's a consciousness, it's not really uh, computed into the calculation. Why scientists are watching things and wanting for things to happen, their mind is influencing the outcome of it. And so therefore, um, the result will be the same, really. It won't be... Um, they won't necessarily... I mean, they might find a new particle. If they all believe they're going to find a new particle, then that's what they'll see. But they might be just looking at something that basically is a reflection of their own consciousness in that quantum field. They're actually creating that thing in front of them. They have to realise that if you're an elemental, you're able to manipulate elements, and therefore you're able to manipulate the quantum field. In the same way, these other beings that are connected to nature, like you know the fairy folk and so on, can manipulate things around them. I don't know to what level, what power. It depends where you are and how they, how well they understand the um, quantum universe. Probably a lot more because they're actually exist in that framework all the time. They don't seem, you know, like we wake up and we go, this is our physical body, and then you get on with it. Um, but I think spiritually our body's fairly, fairly resilient and um, could be in a light body. So I mean, in daytime, you're probably the strongest. Things like, um, you're gonna find it hard to have a psychic attack if you're out in the sunshine outside, because I think the actual energy reflects back and it creates a field around you and you're kind of like as a hologram you've, you've enhanced your being you know because like, you see how white my hand looks there see it's quite um it's not like you can see through it so the influences are different but then again at night you're probably more vulnerable to different attacks that's usually the way it works if you're either asleep you've gone into your own spiritual corporeal form and um had certain influences 
have an effect on you. So, so with the CERN is that it, 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 it's they kind of like writing a game. So you're trying to see what happens, but you're not realizing that you're so focused on it, the outcome, that you're creating you're creating this thing coming back. So if they do another test with a different group of people, they don't tend. I tell you what, if you take if you take all the scientists out of it and you just put observers in there, observers that don't know what they're looking for. So they're going to say it's um, you know. Hedron Collider, you're going to see, you're going to get some information, we just want to see what you, you feel about it, and you know, you might even take someone to spiritual there, get someone meditating on it, and all sorts of things. See what the actual data comes back as. Or even remove all the scientists and just have it as an AI. But then does an AI have a consciousness? And then is consciousness limited from time? So, therefore, in the future, some scientists look at the results, and because of that, they've already influenced the the outcome before it's happened, which is, sounds nuts, because once they know the results, that changes their life forever. You know, if it's some, they found out something completely new, or that part of time would just be wiped away from their memory, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to use that data. It's um, it's very complicated. It's a dream within a dream. That's the that's what it's all about. You know, it's like um, you can only go so far in within a dream, or you might go to another level and experience something else. But you don't never realise fully that you're in the dream. Sometimes you can kind of, as you're coming out, you do. <coughs> or when you're fully aware, is when you just sort of wake up and stuff happens. So yeah, it's quite interesting stuff. So it's not going to be the size of the uh, hydron collide. Hydro, who's in that? It's not going to be, for CERN, it's not going to be the size of the Hydron Collider. It's, um, I don't know why it's forgetting what it is now. Maybe it's been removed from my mind. Um, it, so yeah, a bigger one's not going to get you know, necessarily better results. But why? I think maybe the technology can be used for other things as well. Possibly it's causing a, a ripple through space and time. As it, as it whips around, you know, like a Catherine wheel, the way that spins. But it's creating probably, as it circles around, it's probably creating a ripple effect. And um, maybe this distortion is, is slightly unnatural and um, would attract um, entities from out of our world, really. And um, so, element as a consciousness, gravity and consciousness work together. They're in tangent. There's some things in tangent because it influences. But like water, the consciousness is always there, and the field to create gravity is always there. It's only when it's, it comes under as an influence, so there's a movement, and that movement must come from a consciousness. So it's very subtle forces that influence things. So that's um, hydron collider. Hydron collider. See, I don't know why it was just like boom. And um, other things I was looking at as well. I noticed um, I've been doing this. this um, Raja Yoga, and, um, and basically it's it's all about, because most people think meditation is all about what you see in your mind, but this is what you feel, and it's the feeling is quite a different, um, I mean I'm aware of energy, if I concentrate on an area of body, and like where you put your chi, but I haven't really concentrated on my heart, so I might be playing with organs, and other, other energy spots, pressure spots, so I have to look at um, pressure points and other things, um, I do have some books that go on to about, um, the other pressure points. There's also other um, chakra points outside your body, which I don't think there's much information on things outside of it. They all stick to the seven down your spine, don't they? Um, so outside of your body, where they might be, you might be orbiting around you. Possibly when people, you know, they hold, they call it like a dragon's ball, or dragon's pearl. They hold a chi ball. Maybe you can pull them into there and then just charge them up and then sort of like release them. So they're almost like um, like you've got drones or something flying around you, protecting you. Um, so that's always an option. I have to play around with the spiritual side of it. And um, so yeah, so basically I've been practicing it. I've noticed that it's, at first it was like, um, there's a little bit of sort of like pressure, but it's got a lot bigger now. Now I can feel it sort of more towards the collarbones, like here, between there and there. And and I saw the imagery that the heart and the lungs, but the lungs were wings, like angel wings. 
which was um, something quite different because it kind of had this esoteric thing that I connected that, you know, like the Cupid signs and these other things, you see these wings and this heart, and that seems to make more sense. Or it's like the inner angel, you know, you've got these wings inside you, um, but to exist in this form, they're inside you. And they to deal with the air side of things anyway. So it'd be interesting. And um, something else as well is uh, chameleon ability. I noticed this, um, I think we all do it anyway, if you kind of uh, have empathy. But it's not just character or culture. So somebody might talk in a certain way and you start talking like, yeah, that's all right, mate, yeah, you know what I mean? Or um, you might go, I understand what you mean, yeah, so it's quite good, that is. You know, you kind of change your accent a little bit to fit the social situation. But there's also, um, I noticed mental function as well. I was um, doing some work with some people that had um, learning disabilities and um, they were talking. It's like, oh yeah, she's coming, yeah, yeah, she's coming. And all these sorts of things, you know, like, oh, it does say that, it does say that. There's repetitive speech patterns and things like that are in there. And um, I didn't really mimic that, but I kind of felt like I was changing how I was communicating. That's good, isn't it? Oh yeah, I understand. You know, it's sort of that effect. It was kind of like that wavelength, and it was different because it was actually mental capacity. It's not something I want to play around with too much because you might end up, you know, like someone's got a certain disability. Like you don't want to sort of over mimic them. Um, but I think it's a spiritual connection now. That's what it is to the heart because you're doing it without thinking it, and it's um, intuitive uh, responses and reactions. So that's um, something different. So yeah, anyway, this is Pixie signing off, and uh, speak to you soon.